Hi, my name is Jordan, and this lecture is on Chapter 3 of Research Methods and Physical Activity by Thomas and colleagues, titled Presenting the Problem. We will be presenting the first half of this lecture, and the also wonderful Tyler Cerna will be covering the last half. Now, this is an outline of the chapter. As you can see here, there are nine different sections that will be covered in this lecture each of which we will go into much more detail later. For the sake of introducing the content of this lecture, I can explain each section briefly. The chapter first goes over choosing a title and writing an introduction. It explains in great detail the best way to create a title and all the different aspects of a good introduction. It then goes on to talk about stating the research problem and presenting the hypothesis. Again, the book has specific details on this that we will go into detail later. There are also many different important aspects of an introduction that are discussed, like operational definitions, assumptions, limitations, delimitations, and the importance of justifying the significance of the study. Uh, the chapter focuses specifically on writing a research proposal and brings attention to the fact that no proposal is the same. It also explains the differences between a thesis and a research article. Uh, throughout the lecture, we will be doing different activities to put what we've learned into practice. And we will end the lecture with a final summary and a kahoot. The learning objectives for this chapter include the ones on Canvas that were created by Dr. Jock, as well as a couple different ones that Tyler and I have come up with based on the content of this specific chapter. Uh, the first two objectives created by doc, doc, Dr. Jock are to become well-versed in an area of research and to be better prepared to propose a, or, and conduct a thesis. And Tyler and I have come up with subsections of these uh, objectives that we believe will help achieve those first two objectives. Now, these are to accurately identify all of the different types of variables that are discussed in the chapter, identify what words might need to be operationally defined within your research, successfully identify some assumptions, delimitations, and limitations uh, in your own research, and to understand why justifying the significance of the study is important. Now it's time to go into the first section of the chapter, choosing the title. Thomas and colleagues explain that a good title sufficiently expresses the purpose of the study in a clear and concise way, short but sweet. Now, good titles should not be too long or too short, but should still be able to tell the reader exactly what the study is about. You wanna be able to catch the attention of anyone looking through different um, studies or um, attending your proposal. It's important for the writer to be aware of their audience so they know how to approach creating the title. Titles are often not written until after the paper is complete because the title often depends on the results of the study. But we're going to try a little activity that involves creating a title. So our first activity is to produce an example of a clearly written title for your own research. For this activity, write this title as if you had already completed the study and have results to go off of. This can be anything you wish. Just make sure it explains what the research is about in an effective and concise way. Now you can pause this video and take a minute to come up with something good. Make sure to be prepared to type your title in the chat when we, when we have class and we will go over the reasons why it's a good title. This is all about making it interesting. So have fun with it. After you've completed activity one, it's time to discuss the next section of the chapter, writing the introduction. The introduction is very important that it needs to explain the study thoroughly enough to get the main focus across, but also captivate the reader. It needs to be concise, but it also needs to strike a spark. So let's take a look. This is how the book explains how to write a good introduction. First, the introduction needs to help the reader understand the problem so that they can gain interest in the solution. As a writer, you want to assume the reader is knowledgeable about the topic, but also make sure to explain specific aspects that you might 
you may maybe be well more well versed in um, from conducting the research review. You also want to give a thorough background on the research topic so that the reader understands the why of your research. It is also important to explain the research that has been done on the topic and identify a gap in literature. If your research is something that has not yet been looked into, all the more interesting for the reader and all the more significant for your community. Since the reader needs to understand the problem and be interested in the process of solving the problem, the writing skills and knowledge of the writer, writer are detrimental. I would suggest to always check with your peers and advisors to see what can be modified or revamped. The research problem should appear in the introduction before the literature review. In order to state a research pro problem, the writer needs to identify the variables. So here we have an independent variable versus dependent variable. And this is how I like to think about this. The dependent variable depends on the independent variable. We're often measuring the change in the dependent variable in an experimental study. So the change depends on the independent variable. The change that we're hoping to observe is caused by the independent variable. Now here we have a couple of different types of variables often found in research studies. Control variables um, are controlled by the researcher to give, a more, to give more validity to the research. For example, if you're examining the effect of physical activity, you need a control group that does not participate in any physical activity programs to justify that physical activity is the reason for the change. A categorical variables are those that cannot be manipulated um, such as age or race. They just group subjects or participants into different groups based on something that's not necessarily related to the research topic. An extraneous variable is one that affects the relationship between the independent and dependent variables. So if you're conducting a research study in a specific environment and there just so happens to be construction in that environment for two weeks of the study, Having a change, having to change locations might be an extraneous variable. The final step to stating the research project is, construct, is structuring the problem statement. The sentence structure or syntax should be composed in a way that does not confuse the reader in any way. Now, that's it for me. Tyler will be taking over the next half of the lecture. Take it away, Tyler. <laughs>